turn your eyes to the Lord. You got to turn away from the noise in your life and make sure that you understand that communion is just for that purpose. Amen. There's power in communion. Amen. There's a reason for communion. Yeah. And we're going to get into it today and find out why Paul has such a, a problem with the Corinthian church. And most of it is because they did not have the true faith and love for what Jesus has done. They did not have an understanding of, of the payment that he paid and what it was for. And many of us the same way. You know, we, we don't understand why Christ died. Why the power of Christ is not operating in our life. Just as the disciples that knew Jesus, walked with Jesus, was with Jesus, could not see who Jesus was when he appeared to them. Because they did not look to Jesus with faith. So I encourage you today when you look at communion, Look at communion with faith. Amen. Receive what he has done for you Amen. and me. Receive the promises that come out of communion. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about today the importance and significance of communion. Amen. Past, present, and future. Now the scripture tells us in Proverbs 24 and 16, and this is the Amplified Bible. It says, for a righteous man falls several times and rises again. But the wicked are overthrown by calamity. I'm sorry, kids. I'm sorry. Let our kids go to the learning room and Amen. learn of the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for our children. Amen. Amen. As Proverbs 24 and 16 said, it said, For a righteous man fall several times, but he arises again. How many of you guys have ever been in the state of probably still is at times just like me? You fall and you just can't see your way. You, you, you just, it seems as though you just can't get things right. Every time you try to do something that's right, you end up falling even worse. You ever been to a place where you're just depressed and you just can't seem to get over the hump? You know? And there are many times that you and I have been in a place that, that we need deliverance in a dark place that we can't see our way out. Well, the Bible says that if you are born again, you are a righteous person, you are a person of faith in Christ, it says that you're going to fall sometime. You know? You, you, you're not going to just always be perfect in this world. You're going to fall sometime. But God got a purpose for it. The Bible says, but they rise again. Amen. The wicked man have no hope. The man that doesn't see Christ and put him first, he have no way to go. You and I used to be that way when we were children of the devil. We had no hope. All we had was what was in front of us. And most of us tried to make good of it by forcing our way and using and misusing others. Amen? But now we can rest in Christ. If we fall, we get up. Do you not know that communion is for that very purpose? Communion is for you being able to stand again. Yeah. You being able to lay everything on the cross. Yeah. If you made a mistake, lay it on the cross and get up again. For you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Do you not know scripture foretells that God has forgiven you when you receive Christ? Past, present, and future. Yeah, Sin has been dealt with through Christ Jesus. In the moment that you receive Christ, that's the moment that you are free and God calls you righteous. Amen. It ain't based on your good deeds. It's not based on your performance, my performance, because we can't perform enough to please God. When God see us through Christ, we're hidden under the wings of the shadow of the Almighty. That's good. The Bible says this in Psalms 91, he that bides in the secret place of the Most High shall also dwell under, he that dwells in the secret of the Most High shall also abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That shadow is Jesus. Amen. God holds us to his standards. When he looks at us, he sees Jesus. Amen. He no longer sees the children of devils. Yeah. Amen? So how grateful should we be for communion? Amen. It is a remembrance of what Jesus has commanded us to do by faith in this communion. You have everything you need. The 
The Bible says that communion is a place to find refuge. John 50, 40 says this here, and ye will not come to me that you might have life. If you turn to the Lord, you will have life. Don't give up quitting faith just because you know you've fallen and you're a believer and the devil will try to get you into guilt and shame. The devil will try to pull you back into that world and tell you you're not who you say you are. But when you rise up and know that God judges you by Jesus' standards and not your own, you can call the devil a liar, rise up and say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. This is why communion is given. The Bible tells us that the communion is given for the sake that we might have life and have it more a bit abundantly. Amen. So when we do this in remembrance and have faith for it, life comes to us. Amen. Amen. The Lord told me to have this message when God, when Pastor asked me to come forth with this message. The Lord had already told me to do this message. And the Lord said to me that those ones that fear in communion fear no more. For communion is not to be feared. It is not something that you should run away from but run to. Right. Amen. So anytime that you get in a place that you've fallen or you've wrong or you've done wrong, this is the very place you need to be on the day of communion. Amen. Amen. It is not the place that you go, well, I'm guilty. I can't do this. I can't. Oh, I'm so. Now, that's the devil. That's a lie of the enemy to keep you into the in, in defeat. Allow the enemy to keep you away from the blood and the body of Christ. Because you know what happens when you do that? He steals your prosperity. He steals your healing. He steals your victory. He steals your breakthrough. When God got it for you and to bring you out of shackles and from, from bondage to freedom. And this is what communion is about. That's why Passover was so important to Israel. They came from bondage to freedom, Pastor. Amen. And that's the reason why we commemorate Jesus Christ. Because on the day that he gave victory, he said, it is finished. Yeah. That means that you and I, through him, have victory Amen. from that day forward. Amen. The enemy is a liar. Amen. Don't let him deceive you or steal from you and take from you. That is rightfully yours. Let me tell you something. Everything starts in the spirit. Why are you experiencing those things in the natural? Is because everything starts in the spirit. And if the enemy can grab your mind and take the spirit of God uh, uh, away from your, your faith, then what happens is, is you die and you fall away and you get into addictions and you get into captivity. You get in a place of darkness. You get in a place that you're up and then you're down. You're up and you're down. You get into a place that your mind is persuading your spirit now through your flesh to give up quitting faith. And some of us get to a place of suicide. But God didn't make you to be suicidal. Amen. He has given you power to trade upon the serpents and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Yes. The enemy is a liar. <clears throat> He's trying to steal the sacrament from you and steal the reason for it. Mm. Amen? Amen? Our text scripture is going to say this, and I'm going to read this here briefly. So we can get through this with, with for spent on time. So the text actually says in 1 Corinthians 10, and this is where we're coming from. Brother James, you can put that up for me. And we're going to look at the 16th verse to the 18th verse. During the time that Paul was making this discussion with the, the Corinthian church, they were still sucking on milk and they were not eating meat. And as long as you stay on milk, carnality is going to be your best friend. Fleshly ways going to be your ways. And you'll never grow into the spiritual things of God. Where the Corinthian with church was yet come. And they were still babes in Christ. So they did so many fleshly things that dishonored what God had for them. Do you not know the flesh will keep you away from your promises? Amen. The Bible says the flesh is an enemy against God. Amen. 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 There's no condemnation to him that walks in the spirit. Amen? So when you get into a place to where you, you're in a place where the enemy is trying to attack you in a carnal way, it's time to pray. It's time to get before God and shake it off. Amen? And know that the promises of God would never fail you, nor forsake you. Amen? The scripture says the cup of blessing. It's talking about communion. This cup of blessing, which is
is blessed. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Now he asked them a question because they were, they were dipping and dabbing in idolatry. They were dipping and dabbing in things that dishonored the body and the blood of Christ. So you and I got to understand that when communion is a call to come, it's not a call to stay away. It's not a call to dishonor and dis, uh, discredit and desecrate the blood and the body of Christ. It's the time to come to receive the gift of God and not to reject the gift of God. Amen? Amen. So he asked him, he said, now is it not, is it, is it not the cup, the cup is a, is a blessing to us? Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? So the cup that we take in God's eyes is actually the blood of Jesus. The moment you take it, God sees the shed blood of Jesus on that beating post. God sees the shed blood of Jesus on that cross. God sees the shed blood of Jesus paid and poured for us. When you take that communion, you should remember and commemorate what he did for you. Amen? Because it's a reason for the blood. The blood is a perpetuation for your sins. The blood is an atonement for your sins. The Bible calls it a greatest change. Amen. Jesus for you. Jesus for me. Amen. A life for a life. Amen. And Jesus took the life for the whole world. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now those are powerful words. But they will never become true to you until they embed it in your heart. When you receive it truly in your heart, not on your mind and not just with your lips. But as we have said before, this is a heart and mouth relationship. This is not just something you say out of your mouth. Have you ever been with a person that everything that come out of their mouth is untrue? Because ain't nothing in their heart but lies. You don't want to seem like that before the Lord our God. He wants us real, amen? amen. And the Bible tells us also that the bread which is broken, the bread. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? The bread itself represents the body of Christ. So when you take the body of Jesus, you commemorate the payment in which he paid. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, that he had taken on our griefs, our sorrows, our sickness, our pain, our poverty. Yeah. Everything that's not of the kingdom of God, Jesus had taken it on. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And the Bible said he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace were upon him. And one translation said our peace was won by him. We got peace with God now. We're not enemies with him any longer. God is not angry with us any longer, ever, forevermore in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus satisfied the wrath of God. Jesus satisfied the holiness of God. Jesus satisfied the purity of God. So no man should come and try to desecrate God's way and say, no, not God's way, my way. Amen? Amen. If God has set precedence in order, if he has set foundation in order, if God said his ways are above our ways, his thoughts are above our thoughts, then we need to find out what God's ways are. Amen. Not to come up with our own ways. Right. Not to determine the ways that we should live. Yeah. For all, oh, the Lord said to me, do you have the power to change any hairs on your head? And he said to Joseph, do you have the power to, to measure your stature and grow your stature, as he said to grow to Joseph? And he told Joseph to girdle up his loins. Mm. Be like a man. And God told him who he was. Mm. Yeah. Only God had this power. This is the fear of the Lord. Yeah. When you understand that God is God, mm -hmm. and if you lack wisdom, ask God for the wisdom is the principal thing. It is the thing that you find that will bring the fear of the Lord in your heart because you will find out who he is yeah. for yourself, not for somebody that told you this. Amen. This fear will cause God, through Christ Jesus, to act in your life. Yeah. Yeah. God will give you preventative medicine. Yes, he will. God will take yes. you out of a dark place yes. into a place where there's light. Yes. God will take you from an unfriendly place and he'll place you among yes. friendly. Yes. Amen. God will place you to a place, man, I'm telling you that life is a joy yes. and not those things that change that. Yes. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a past, there's a present, and there's a future of yes. Amen. 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 Paul talked to 
the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church was celebrating, gorging themselves, and eating greedily at the feast. They weren't taking the communion seriously. And others, they, they left others hungry when they didn't, couldn't afford it. So they were sitting up doing just like the world do. The rich over the poor. One that's up walking on, trampling on one that's down. They were eating and marrying and drinking, you know, and, and they weren't taking care of one another. The Bible tells us in Corinthians 11, 17 through 34, that they brought their own food. And someone couldn't, that couldn't bring much, he did without. How many of us are in that place? We see people who are in need and we got it. And we refuse to help. Especially in the household of faith. Now I'm not talking about people that's misusing and have the wrong spirit. But if the spirit of the Lord moves you, we talked about the unction of the Holy Spirit. You should obey the Holy Spirit. Amen? As a result, Communion was, uh, had a lack of faith for the body and the blood of Christ. Paul says that there were not, they were not really celebrating the Lord's Supper. So this is a question that you and I have. Why do you come to communion? What is it to you? Do you really understand what communion has been given for? The purpose of communion, the power of communion. The power of Jesus Christ dying on that cross. The power of him resurrecting from the dead. Do you not know that when Jesus said it is finished, he went down to paradise. He fought the enemies in Hades. He took the keys of death and hell. They'll have no, no charge over you in it all. Amen. Amen. It has no charge over you in it all. So Jesus took it. And when he took it, he rose up out of the dead, and there was about there was many rose up right out of him yes, from the old testament. Yes, called the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. So whether you believe it or not, he's coming again. Amen. See, communion Amen. commemorates the future too. Amen. Jesus said, I will come again Amen. and receive you unto myself. Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. That is the hope of glory. Yes. When you take communion, you are the big sight. You ought to be ready, ready to take the minute and know that your Lord and Savior have you in mind. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. The people was not treating communion as a sacred uh, ordinance instituted by Jesus. Jesus instituted this, this sacred ordinance. Right, right. Ordinance. He took it from the shadow and picture that God gave of him from the beginning of the world. The shadow, the picture, the type of Jesus throughout the scriptures that identified him through the sacrifices of Israel called Passover. Amen? Amen. And he made the communion is the very same thing that the children of Israel had that day. The children of Israel had Passover called a peace Passover. And God washed their sins away when they ate all of it. Amen? They had to eat it, just like you and I eat the body of Christ. Yeah. They had to drink and drink it because they, they Jesus, the blood of Christ was for us. Yes, Amen. So well, just like the children of Israel was healed from this here sacrament, you and I have the same elements here. And it is for our healing. It is for our deliverance. It is for our our, our breakthrough. It is not just for you to come and make a ritual out of it or come out of habit and duty. Yeah. It's for you to come in faith and receive what God has blessed you with. Yeah. 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 Instead of reminding the people uh, of Jesus' sacrifice, mm -hmm. communion became a means of self-gratification, making greater the division among the Corinthian church, and they divided themselves. Mm -hmm. After describing the tell of you and I can't divide ourselves, that's why we tell you, tell people, come on, come on, and don't miss communion. It's for you. Don't miss church. It's for you. Amen. 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 Come and receive your healing. Yeah. Come and receive your breakthrough. Yeah. Amen. Amen. After describing the situation and explaining what communion should be, Paul writes, So then, whoever 
eat and drink of eats, eats this bread and drink this cup of the Lord is unworthy in an unworthy manner. I understand unworthy manner. Amen. What was the children of uh, what was the Corinthian church doing at that time? They were greedy. They were dishonoring, desecrating the meaning of the blood of the body and the blood of Christ. You are not in spiritual sense and then wasted with of our behavior. We do the same thing. We haven't grown up. We're still on meat, milk and not on meat. So when you take this bread, this body, and this blood, it is by faith that you take it. Oh, yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. If you eat it unworthily, it's guilty of the sin of sinning against the body and the blood of Christ. If you do it in an unworthy manner. Now, some people take that manner out and they just say unworthy, which actually points to your sins or things that's going on in your life. Amen? Sin is sin. I don't care what, what, how your actions are. So unworthy manner is how you actually accepting the body and the blood of Jesus. Unworthy manner is the faith that you give to it or you don't give to it. Do you not know that faith causes you to walk righteous? <laughs> That's what the Lord said. First seek ye the kingdom of God in my righteousness. His righteousness is faith in Christ. His righteousness is faith. Did you not know the just shall live by faith? Do you not know that Abraham received, the, 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 received God and the righteousness of God by his faith? He was called righteous because of his faith. So the righteousness of God is your faith in the communion, your faith in the body of Christ, your faith in the work that he has done, your faith that he has buried your sins and my sins on the cross. And he has paid the price. Not anybody else. Praise God. Everyone ought to examine themselves, Paul says, before they eat and drink, to eat this bread and drink this cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning. Now he's saying discerning. Without discerning, meaning recognizing his worth and having faith in his purpose. So when you don't discern the body of Christ, it means that you got doubt that he did it for you. When you don't discern the body of Christ, meaning that you don't understand that this was paid for the very thing you're going through. Amen? Amen. Discerning means that I walk by faith and not by sight. Discerning means that I take the body of Christ and I proclaim the word of God that I am free from whatever is ill in me. I place it on the cross. See, faith causes things to activate in your life and the reality of the spirit becomes your natural. I got to explain it. Everything comes from the spirit world. Everything in the kingdom of God is by faith. Yes. Everything. The Bible says without faith in Hebrews 11 and 6. It is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is God. That is God means that he's the one that can do it. Yes. Amen. And can't nobody else do it, my brother. Only he can do it. Amen. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently come after him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the word said, in the King James Version says, seek him. Yes. Another translation said, you come after him aggressively. Yes. You go after him, man, with purpose. Yes. You go after him, besides what you want. You go after him because now you have faith that there's a greater thing in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Amen? Yes. So let us explain. Everything of the kingdom of God is by faith. Everything that's in the kingdom of God that you see on this earth has come from the spirit world. In Hebrews 11 and 3, it says this here. It said, through faith, the worlds, the universe, everything that you know, everything that you see, was formed, created by the power of his word. Yeah. So, those, so that those things that are seen were not made by those things that do appear. You can look all you want. You weren't made by what it appeared. Just because your mama had you and your daddy gave the seed doesn't mean you was made by what it appeared. God gave the blood and God gave the seed. Amen. God created all things in the elements of this world. From every, every little periodic table element to where we are today that we see a fully developed child of the living God. 
Amen? Amen. So we know that it comes from God. And the Bible said that everything is held together by the power of his word. His word is Jesus. His word came. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Everything was made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the life of men. Yeah. The Bible said the 14th verse, in that word was made flesh. Yeah. He came from the spirit. And God made him natural, just like you and I. Amen. God took his own word and became flesh. Yeah. That's how he's God too. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God can do anything he want to do because he's God. Yeah. And until you realize and walk into the area where God is at, you wouldn't be able to see anything except God revealed it to you. Amen. 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 In the New Testament, the Word of God says that the Old Testament had a, had a veil over their face. They could not see the truth. They could not see the spirit realm. They could not see God's purpose and design. The New Testament, the Bible says the veil is lifted when it turned to Christ. See, when it turned to Jesus, Jesus opened up the spiritual side. Yes. This is why Nicodemus has such a problem, and you and I may have a, such a problem in the world. Because we don't look to Jesus. You know, we get in there and try to figure it out ourselves in the natural. We try to go through this dictionary, that dictionary, read this book, read that book. I'm going to hear this minister, that minister, that, that prophet, and I'm going to jump from this church to that church. And we're going to go all over. We're trying to find the truth. Because you're doing it in yourself, you'll never see it. You'll never receive it. Nicodemus came to Jesus after he whipped him out of the temple because he was confused. Well, hold on, hold on, Jesus, you know this is a temple. How are you going to come in here and whip everybody out of the temple? Me the Lord. You know, I know that God chastised you and I too. <laughs> God makes us uncomfortable so we can turn to him. God put us in a place so we can find him. That's why I tell people, don't help everybody. You get in God's way. Amen. You can't help everybody. Amen. You let God do what he needs to do in their life. If you keep helping them, God can't wake them up. Yeah. <laughs> the prodigal son didn't have no help. They rejected him. You understand? He spent all of his life. They never would. Have. As long as he was good, had money, he was part of it. They were all good. When he lost everything and needed help, they rejected him. That's what the world would be. Own family at times. Reject you. Throw you out the doors. Drag you in the wood. Lie on you. Do other things, man. Family work for us sometimes, brother. But I tell you the truth, man, the prodigal son went into that pit. And he thought, man, the food for the pigs was good enough. And he shook it off. He said, oh, my father got more than that. You and I need to shake it off and know that God got more to for you through the communion. When you take this sacrament, when you take the body, and you take the blood, it is the payment for everything we go through in this life and have gone through in this life. Because God is a gracious God, he gently changes us. Amen. Let's make this quick. Do you not know you're forgiven past, present, and future? Amen. If you don't know, put this in your notes. Hebrews 10, 10 through 18. Go and read it. And find out that you are actually forgiven past, present, and future. Because God sees you through Christ. He don't see you in your own box. Amen. The Bible said in 17, 17 and 18 verse. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, if you are forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That's the NIV. And Paul is essentially asking the people to do this. And this is what we ask you when you come for communion. Amen? He essentially asking the people to have a heart check. Amen? Can you guys have a heart check today? Amen. See, I'm not talking about a mind check. I'm not talking about your remembrance of scripture. A true heart check. What, what do I mean by a true heart check? A true heart check is this here. You
you searching for the Lord? Are you following things that happen in your life? The scripture says in Jeremiah 29 and 13, and you should search for me, but you will not find me until you search for me with all your heart. Yeah. Right. See, it's a hard thing. You got to give your heart. You got to surrender. Amen? And unless you surrender, God cannot reach you and reach you and put you where he wants you to be. The Bible also says in Jeremiah that I know the thoughts I think towards you, God says. I know the plans I made for you, God says. And they're plans of peace and not evil. Plans to give you an expected end. One translation to give you prosperity and success. Amen? Take you out of the horrible pit and place you on solid ground. We'll try to do this in a, little, in a few minutes. We got about five minutes. Amen. Amen. This kind of faith causes you to be real. When you give your heart, it causes you to be real. You ever been in a position where you're just real? If, if, if nobody ever experienced that, it's a time to experience it. If you've just been a liar all your life, and you've never just been real about something, today is the day Amen. to be real. Amen. Amen. Amen? And I'm going to tell you something. It is the most wonderful freedom. When, when you actually can come and just be real, it is the most wonderful freedom. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, let me tell you something, how you can do this for yourself. You can get in a place and, and, and get all the noise away from around you. Get away from people, get away from things around you, and just be real with God. Amen. Amen. He might answer, he might not. Open up your heart and let God in. Yes. Flow and just be real. God knows anyway, so what you trying to hide? Yes. He see all things the word says. Yes. But, uh, no, but until you learn how to step out in faith and get out of the boat and walk like Peter did, you will never know the experience of being real. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Peter was real when he stepped out that boat. Yeah. You, you can step out that boat, you see all that water there, the storm raging and stuff yeah. like that, you gonna step out the boat. Yeah. It was real. Let me tell you something, some of us gonna run in the field because we're cowards. <laughs> I used to be a coward until God gave me some faith. <laughs> you know, I know what I I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> God gave me some faith to rise up and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God gave me some faith to wait and wait on the Lord. God gave me some faith to stand, having not all to stand when I have no way to stand. God gave me the faith to just hold on to him when I couldn't hold no more. God gave me the faith to push forward when I couldn't push no more. The Bible said your weakness is his strength. When it turned to Jesus he is your strength. He is your refuge. He is your fortress. He is your rock. He is your God. And he is here to deliver you in communion today. When you take faith in the body, in the blood of Christ. Amen. The bread is for a reason. The body is for a reason to crush the works of the enemy. The Bible said this is the reason why John, that, that Jesus came into the world in 1 John. To destroy the works of the enemy. Yes. People say, well, how are you doing? I don't see him. See, that's what Israel's problem was. Yeah. They couldn't receive Jesus because they were looking for a physical Messiah <laughs> with strength and power to overcome that enemy. And they're the only people that are going to rise up. But he came. And something that you just don't look at and, and, and think that that's him. He came. Just an ordinary man. He came. You know, not with that, that type of strength in him, but spiritual strength. See, Jesus' battle was against the enemy, Satan. It wasn't against you and I. His battle wasn't against the Romans. His battles wasn't against the, 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 the other nations or cultures. His battles wasn't against this world. 
It was against the, the, the Lord and the God of this world. And it still is against the God of this world. It's a spiritual war. Amen? That's why communion is important. It breaks those chapters. It shows you who you are. So let me tell you something. The enemy don't want to know who you are in Christ. He don't want you to accept the truth and to walk in it. Because he'll run in terror that he ain't got no power. See, Jesus took it off. The only power is what, he, what we give him. When we open up our mind to the devil's thoughts, Amen. and we allow him to come into our life, things transpire by the laws that have been fixed by God. If he can persuade your mind to, to sow things that you're going to reap, then that's the law of God that seed time and harvest shall not cease. Cold and winter shall not cease. It is a law of reciprocity. Whatsoever man saw it, that shall he also reap. So if the enemy comes in and he can tax your mind, he can destroy your life. To make this in short, and we're going to end because my time is a few minutes. <laughs> Self examination <coughs> and repentance. Repentance is good for the soul. Amen. It's good for the soul. This is not what God, what Paul was talking about, about examining yourself. He was saying examine yourself so you can see whether you're in the faith or not. Do you really trust what this community is about? But through, through, the, through the process of faith, it causes you to repent and change. <laughs> Clean it up in your mind and in your heart that you do not take the, the body and the blood of Christ unworthy. Many died because of this. Amen? The children of Israel, real quick, look into the past, the picture of Christ. They were delivered from Egypt. And because they were delivered from Egypt, God gave them something wonderful in their life. God told them to obey this sacrament called Passover. Take the lamb. Kill the lamb. Prepare yourselves. They prepared themselves by putting the blood on the doorposts and over the lentils. They prepared themselves by eating unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Their captivity. Their captivity was gruesome and harsh for 400 years. That bondage that they was living in. God was about to set them free because of their faith and the actions that they took in this sacrament. The deaf angel passed them by. Let me tell you something. When you, when you take this sacrament and you realize what Christ has done, what happened is that whatever going on in your life is dead. The scripture foretells that when they came out of Egypt, none was feeble. From, from young to old. When they came out of this sacrament, they was healed, set free, delivered, and it was rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Hebrews said this year, it was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death shall uh, would, would not kill them and they kill their firstborn. Do you not know that your firstborn <laughs> In your life is you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. You guys may not think that's strange. You understand? The deaf angel passed you by. And the deaf angel passed us by. Amen. Jesus is the firstborn amongst many. And when you receive Jesus, you receive the firstborn uh, uh, rights. You receive the firstborn, you know, privileges. You are your ass with Christ, the word says. So now the, 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 the things that's in your life that causes death can pass you by when it looks to Jesus. Amen? When you take the sacrifice, you can see it in a different manner. Here's one way. The Lord will make your enemies your footstool. Let me see. Let me tell you something. He made the enemies of, of Israel footstool by them taking this in and going through the door, closed the door, what God told them to do. He made uh, Egypt their footstool. In so much, the scripture says in Exodus 12 and 33, all the Egyptians urged the people of Israel to get out the land quickly as possible, for they thought or feared we would all die if they stayed here. Mm. Let me tell you something. The enemy 
run in terror. The things in your life will run in terror when you've got that type of faith. When you understand what the sacraments are for, what Jesus has done, God will tell your enemy to run like terror. After the sacrifice, there was overflowing blessings in, in, in the Passover. The Bible says here in Psalms uh, 105, 37 through 40. Go and read it, 105. Let's go read it. It says, it says prosperity and healing was there because of this. It said that he brought them forth also with silver and gold. That's what it is. And if there was not one feeble among them. That's, that's scripture. That means that God has healed them because of their faith in him. Amen. Amen. And it said victory overcomes enemies. Egypt was glad when they departed for the fear of, of, of all of them fell on them. And let me tell you something. God will protect you. God has not given you the spirit of fear. But of power, love, and of a sound mind, because you can stand boldly in the Lord. No matter what you stand against, no matter what mountain you're looking at, no matter what's happening in your life, God will protect you. The Bible told, the Bible said, God told Joshua, uh, be, 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 be strong and of good courage, for I am with you. Yes, I will never leave you nor forsake you, the word says. The Bible says he will protect you and give you safety. He spread a crowd, cloud. For, uh, for them, over them, to protect them by day. And he spread a fire to give them light by night. God will protect you. God will protect you. God will watch over you. And for the sake of time, we're going to get ready for communion. You guys come with a new life.